Lagos Deputy Defense Minister Major Retired Derek Odro has charged chief security officers to collaborate with their colleagues in neighboring countries in identifying the most appropriate, cost effective, and efficient latest security tools that can be employed in addressing threats confronting the region. Speaking at the West African National Security and Armored Vehicles Conference underway in Accra, Major Retired Odro explained the complexity of the activities of terrorists demands that security chiefs in the region must step up their efforts in a smarter way instead of confronting them publicly or directly fighting them back. National security is also collaborated effectively among state agencies in particular countries. Efforts are therefore on the way to equip all security agencies to enable them to perform their roles effectively. In charting the course to protect our national interests, it is important that we get best both in terms of effectiveness and cost. We are also looking for long-term partnership with industry and standardization across the region rather than one off sale with short warranty periods. I therefore charge my service chiefs to work closely with their counterparts in the region to assess the products and solution to be exhibited here with the aim of identifying regional solutions. In a separate interview, Major Odro likened the relationship between the country's two major security agencies to that of a husband and wife. He assured the public whatever friction that may exist between the police and military, the civilians' uh, security will not be compromised. Making reference to the recent clash between the police and the military in Tamale, Major Retired Odro said, in spite of those instances of disagreement over isolation, isolated social issues, the two security agencies have a strong relationship oh you are you and your husband you, you at times you fight in we are in uniform and we are putting together outsiders civilians like you you see us the media you see us you know wanting us to come together so that uh, we can you know defend you we are trying to see that other issues should not read their ugly heads into our operations so that seeing it from outside will mean that oh military and police are always fighting no that is not the issue Mr. Sufia is used, as I've already mentioned, you and your friends who can you know, exchange uh, words or even blows at times. But at the end of the day, we come together. That is uh, the good about the uh, military and the police. Having even uh, exchanged words or having uh, any fracas, we later on uh, come together. That's what happened in Tamale. That the, the very day, they came together and they operated. There, has been, there, has, there hasn't been any, any other fracas or any uh, problems uh, again. If at the end of the day you have adequate security, you will see them as men fighting, but that is not the issue. You have adequate security. You can go about your normal duties without fear. That is what we are looking for. If you see it, you have different eyes. The military, the police, they also have different eyes. Maybe what you see as an antagonistic situation between the two uh, forces or, or the services might not be what is really not happening on the ground. All that you need, the ultimate, is to get adequate security so that uh, Ghana will be, become a very nice place. Uh, but the security will be okay for you to live in. Go about your normal duty set. Director of Counterterrorism at the Ministry of National Security, George Esiama, is advocating a multi-agency approach in fighting terrorism. Mr. Esiama believes a single approach and debate about which security agencies should be the lead agency in tackling threats to the country are unhealthy. He explains, though the police may be seen as the lead agency during terrorism operations, it lacks the capacity to deal with a form of threat without the armed forces. There was a time that there was, there was a big fuss with the, the police and the military thinking about who is, going to, who is going to be the lead agency. When you read all the books, they say, yes, the police is the lead agency. It's true. It's the lead agency in terms of this kind of threat. But after the event, the post-event investigations, the police will, will have to investigate further and prosecute. But the police may not have the capacity, the capability to confront the threat. 
So if we have about three or four uh, people trying to take a hotel or do this, this or that, and the police see to you can take the threat, well and good. We call on the scene, and then the military will stand by. But if we not, they, will, they will stand by, but they will not stand by for the police to be defeated. They will have to be around and to give support to the police. And when, for example, a bomb is thrown, the police we do not know how to deal with bomb threats. If there is a threat from a bomb attack, quickly, the military must take over because they have the capability to deal with that kind of threat. So the issue of who is the lead agency or this or that, it's not an issue. It's not what we are thinking about. It's how to work harmoniously together. If there is fire outbreak, the military and the police will have to allow the fire service to work on the fire before they can go ahead. Immigration at our borders, they give us information about what is going to happen. And while even the event is going on, they will have to see whether some dissidents or some terrorists have uh, infiltrated, whether they are leaving our borders or whatever be the case. They give us that kind of intelligence. So in short, I would say that multi-agency approach is the best thing that we can do to confront the threat of terrorism. Without that, if we work independently, we are going to miss the mark.